Hello! If you are hearing this, then you have been selected for a very special mission. For your convenience, I have taken any unnecessary memories that would distract you from the mission. I will hold on to these memories until you have completed your task. For now, what you must know is that you have been sent to this world for a specific purpose. This place is under attack. A terrible corruption, a darkness that seeks to destroy all things has come to this place, and this world's protectors have not been able to combat it. Unfortunately, this realm largely lies beyond my reach, meaning that I cannot guide you once you enter it or tell you what to expect. You will need to adapt quickly and find the source. If this darkness is not vanquished, this world will fall. So too, if you are taken by this corruption, I will not be able to return you to the life that I have borrowed you from. Once the task is complete, we will meet again. As the scene fades in, you see two cats curled up next to each other. A smaller, smooth, dark one, and a very fluffy gray one. The only movement is of their backs as they slowly breathe. However, everything else around them is completely silent and still. The Tom was the first to stir, slowly at first, his whiskers twitching as the memory of the strange cat faded. The moment that consciousness returned to him, he was sitting upright gasping as if from a nightmare. After pulling himself together, he then took to nudging the cat beside him. Wake up, he'd whisper, an instinctual fear washing over him as if he knew something was deeply wrong. The gray she-cat slowly stirred, getting to her feet and looking around with wide eyes. Wuh! What's going on? Did you have that strange dream as well? The Tom suddenly looked up at her. Yeah, the cat. I saw it. And what it said. I don't want to believe it. But I can hardly remember anything. I feel like I know you though. And your name. You're... Angel, right? Angel slow blinked a few times, her gaze meeting the familiar Tom's face. Yes, Angel seems right, and, um, you're... John? Sorry, this is probably really weird, but I feel like we know each other. Why else would we be here? together. He stared blankly for a long moment before nodding. Yeah, me too. It's just funny. I feel like I remember you better than my own name. But yeah, that's me. I'm John. Angel took a slow step forward towards him, letting out a small chuckle. <laughs> well... You're lucky. I seem to like the name John a lot, uh, for some reason. Um, but, uh, she blushed, looking away, trying to regain her focus. Uh, that strange cat on the chair. He nodded again, doing his best not to make a remark on how much he also liked Angel's name. Yeah. It's said that we're here for a reason. We have to fight the darkness or something like that. Her happy expression turned into a more frightened one. Yes. I mean, things look fine here. Maybe we should look around? Surely this world can't be corrupted. Her happy expression turned into a more frightened one. Yes. I mean, things look fine here. Maybe we should look around? Surely this world can't be corrupted. 
John looked around nervously for a few moments before snapping back to attention. I mean, yeah, sounds good. It does seem quiet though, weirdly quiet. We should stay alert. Angel nodded, but before she could speak, John was off. She quickly walked after him. Despite how empty everything was, the landscape was somewhat beautiful, but very still and unnerving. The weather also seemed almost too perfect. She felt a gentle breeze blow against her fur as she let out a, it seems very quiet. John nodded, but was obviously very distracted by what laid in front of them. Huh, a road. So I guess that there are people here somewhere. Not that they could help. Well, probably have to find some cats like us. They probably know more about what's going on. A lot of what he said went in one ear and out the other, but she felt a pang of worry in her chest. John, just be careful, please, she said, making sure to stay close to him as they both crossed the road. He let out a grin. I'm always careful, he assured her, once they were across. Not that I'd remember, but I like to think so. Angel simply chuckled and continued to follow behind John, only stopping every once in a while to pick up some herbs, gently pushing them into her fur just in case she needed them for later. During one of the stops, John let out a sigh. Is it just me, or does everything seem kind of lifeless? Like, this is the greenest plant we've found. Seems like the old growth is all fading away. Angel felt a heavy sense of dread as she responded. Yeah, you're right. I haven't even seen any sign of life, not, not even a bird. The two continued to walk as John let out a small, I kind of wish we had a bird. I'm starving. After what seemed like hours of walking, Angel stopped. It's just empty. I don't even scent another cat. She was beginning to get fed up with whatever game this Booker cat was playing. If they were here to do something and it was so bad, why could they not find it? You're right, this is pointless. We need a lead, something, anything. He turned away to yell at the barren trees behind him. If there's anyone out there, show yourself. We want to talk. His words continued to linger in the air as Angel spoke up. Yes, please. What do you want with us? Yet nothing responded but the wind. No one answered figures. I guess we'll just keep wandering. Maybe try to see if we can remember anything from before. He huffed. Hopefully we can just get this done quickly. Angel took in a deep breath. Yeah, let's do it. She had no idea what could possibly lie ahead, but with John she wasn't worried. Thankfully, not too much longer, the two of them noticed a sunken in part of the earth covered by tall trees. It seemed to be like some sort of large living area with many different dens. Carefully looking over the edge, they both immediately noticed a small black shadow. It was just out in the middle of a clearing, yet wasn't moving at all. They both instinctively got into a crouch. Whoa, wait, Angel let out, just in case John somehow didn't notice it. Huh, that's, 
He stopped as he also spotted the figure and lowered his voice just as his body. There does seem to be someone down there, he whispered. Angel flashed him a confused glance. Are you sure? It doesn't seem to be moving at all. John looked puzzled at her for a moment before speaking. Doesn't seem to have a scent either, but that could just be because of the direction of the wind. We should get closer, but slowly. The two cats snuck down into the camp with ease. She was nervous she might accidentally step on a branch, but just stayed close to John as they approached the creature. John eyed the empty dens with suspicion, but never let his gaze stray too far from the lone figure, which was definitely looking more like a cat, but something seemed wrong that he couldn't figure out. Angel could tell that he was thinking, but knew they had to be quiet, so she just silently continued to crawl after him. They were getting closer and closer to the creature, yet she still couldn't smell anything. Her fur almost stood on edge when John began to speak. Hey, you over there, don't be afraid. We just want some answers, he said in a very clear but stern voice. He continued to slowly creep up on it until suddenly it vanished. Within an instant, a blink, it was just gone. The Tom immediately raising to his paws. What on earth? Angel leaping up towards him and looking around. Wha- What? It just vanished? He went to inspect the place where the creature had been, but all he found in its place was a slight black residue that he certainly wasn't going to touch with his bare paws. Simply shrugging and looking back at Angel. I don't know. Angel watched carefully as John checked out the residue. She hesitantly gave it a few looks herself. What did it leave behind? It smells awful. We should get away from it, he immediately suggested. We can check the dens, and then we should get out of here. He was right, and Angel was just happy he was still thinking, calm and level-headed. All of this was starting to make her panic, but she tried to remain calm as they both entered inside a large den, but it was empty and smelled stale. As they walked deeper, a sudden shiver overcame Angel. What happened to everybody? No idea. He paused to gesture at the furthest of the little plant nests where more of the black stuff could be seen. But it looks like that thing was here too. Angel scrunched up her nose. Yuck, she let out before they both left the den and continued to explore the camp. It started to get even darker as Angel approached. John? He quickly pulled himself out of a den he was looking in to face her. Yes, Angel? It's getting late. Should we find somewhere safe to sleep? This place gives me bad vibes. Yeah, probably best. This den is empty too, and I bet the rest are as well. Looks like everyone just up and left. Or worse, he said as he led them out of the camp. After a while of walking, John spoke up. Do you smell that? He gently sniffed the air, nodding at whatever was ahead of them. Yeah, it's getting stronger, whatever it is. There's also a 
building up there. John made sure he was a few steps ahead of Angel in case anything happened. It smells like more of that stuff and garbage. Lots of garbage. They were about to enter when Angel stopped. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's safe, but I'm just so tired. I don't know if I can keep going. At least it doesn't smell like anything alive, so hopefully it'll be safe enough, and yeah, I'm exhausted too. Let's look for somewhere to sleep. She let out a soft purr as she followed John into this very cluttered place. It was then that she began to feel a few raindrops. That was the last thing they needed, but I'm sure there was plenty of places that would be dry enough for tonight. Ugh, just what we needed. She let out with a small hiss. And now it's raining. What a great night. He couldn't help but complain. Angel looked around and found a small enough box. This way. There were other bigger options, but she didn't want to give anything the chance to sneak up on her. So this small box would probably be best. She curled up and tried to leave John as much room as possible. She began to try licking and grooming her own fur. At least we can keep our fur dry here tonight. John let out a chuckle. <laughs> well, this is cozy if nothing else. You're a... Uh, very fluffy and warm. Angel then realized that because of his smooth, thin fur, he must be very cold, so she carefully stepped over and curled around him, her large, fluffy tail almost acting as a warm blanket. She couldn't help but blush, hoping this wasn't too forward of her. Is this better? she asked. The tom, too, blushes a little and looks away, but leans into her fur regardless. Yeah, yeah, thanks. We can just relax tonight and worry about those weird things tomorrow. It's not like there was much to do anyways. They had to try to get some rest if they had any hope at figuring more out tomorrow. That sounds good he said, letting out a yawn as he curled up against her. They both slowly began to breathe in a synchronized rhythm as they fell asleep. The unforgiving rain continued to beat down on their little box as they slept throughout the night. However, not everything was still around them. You now suddenly see a small, all-black creature slinking closer to the box. It doesn't move like any normal creature, let alone a cat, but one of slime and ooze. Thankfully walking straight by John and Angel, not seeming to notice them yet. You see Angel wake up suddenly, a startled expression on her face as she quickly looks around. She began to gently paw at John, who was still asleep. He stirred and pushed himself into a sitting position. What? Angel quickly followed and she was on her paws looking around. It may have been a dream, she mumbled. Noticing that at least the rain had stopped and the sun was about to come up. At least it's daytime, she said, taking in a deep breath but only scenting the foul, sour scents that lingered. Angel leaped up onto the box to get a better look around as John stretched for one last time and made his way out of their makeshift den. I don't... He stopped mid-sentence as he spotted a bit of black stuff dripping from the nearest branch that 
certainly hadn't been there before. He gulped slightly and shook his head. Yeah. After a few moments of small talk, John began to leave the area. Let's keep moving. I don't like this place either. Angel nodded and quickly bounded after him. Even though there was no great monsters of the road, they still made sure to avoid it as much as possible. They only stopped once to get some water. Even if there wasn't any prey around, the least they could do was make sure they were hydrated. John, however, side-eyed the water and carefully took a drink. I sure hope this is safe. He grumbled. Angel quickly pulled her head out of the water before shaking it. It seems good to me, she said, as a few water droplets landed on John's face. He couldn't help but let out a chuckle. At least it doesn't have any of that black stuff in it. Probably not, at least. Angel's face turned from a playful one to quickly a worried one. She had forgotten about the black stuff, and her tongue was beginning to tingle a little, but surely it would be okay. Yeah, she said as they both quickly walked away. Thankfully, it didn't take long for them to find a path that went underneath the road. John, frowning, let out a, well, this is foreboding. Angel looking back and nodding. I wonder what made this? Her expression slowly turned into a worried one as she thought about all of the possibilities, but John quickly caught up and gently nuzzled her shoulder. Hopefully we don't have to find out, he said before running ahead. A smile slowly creeping on her face as she responds, yeah. In front of them was a large row of bushes, but thankfully, Angel managed to find a small opening for them to crawl through. As she poked her head out the other side, she realized what was in front of them and waited for John to catch up and take a look himself. Another clearing. Let's keep low this time. That thing might be around again. After a few moments of sneaking, Angel finally got up to her paws. Huh. Still so quiet, she whispered. John also stood to his paws and walked over to her. Uh-huh, indeed. The two cats carefully walked around the large rock structure, not wanting to accidentally miss anything, just as a familiar, sour odor began to fill their nose. John quickly dropped into a crouch. There, he whispered, his voice low and tense. Follow. Angel's eyes widened, but she nodded like usual and followed after him. As they got closer, Angel couldn't help but let out a small panicked, what? what? Is that a kit? John still looked tense as ever. I think so. Maybe I can grab it if I get close enough. Okay, just don't get hit. I'm right behind you, she whispered. Whatever it is, there's clearly something wrong with it. The two began to creep closer and closer. The creature, not seeming to move at all or even notice their existence. Upon further inspection, you can see that it is in fact a black slimy creature that leaves a trail of black goo wherever it goes. Its eyes are somehow faded but bright, as if maybe something used to be there. John crept as close as he was willing to go before leaping at the creature, intending to knock it to the ground. 
he managed to land perfectly on top of the creature, not hurting it, but only pinning it to the ground, wrapping his arms around it. Got it! He shouted back to Angel, doing his best to hold on, but the creature easily able to wriggle out of his paws. However, his hold only lasted for so long as the slimy creature slipped from his paws one final time and darted off. John quickly wasting no time in running after it, Angel quickly getting to her paws and darting after him. Catch it, he yelled as they both began to dart after the lightning fast creature. They watched as it ran across the road they hadn't seen anything dangerous, but still hesitantly looked before chasing after it. Angel had already lost sight of it, but John seemed to be able to keep up with the scent, thankfully. Not too long after, they were led to the opening of a cave on the edge of a mountain. Angel let out a hesitant, Did it? John nodding, it went in there. They both looked hesitantly into the dark cave, John finally speaking up. Not so sure how I feel about going in a dark cave, but we have had to have done this stuff like this before, right? The, the weird cat wouldn't have trusted us with this if we couldn't do it, hopefully. Angel quickly swallowed her worries. I'm right behind you, John she purred as they both slowly crept into the darkness of the cave. Angel unfortunately led them into a few dead ends, but at least they managed to pick up on the scent of the goop. After what seemed like forever in the dark tunnels, they finally saw a light. Whoa, do you see that light too? John instinctively got lower. Stay close. They worked together and managed to make it up the steep slope closer and closer to the light. What, what is it? Angel whispered. John paused as the light grew stronger, only glancing back at Angel. I don't like this, he said, but instinctively continued to walk, almost as if it was drawing him closer. As they entered into the room, they noticed a large crystal structure, but that wasn't all they noticed. John, wait she said, trying to stop him, but he was already going forward, seeming to have also seen what she saw. A cat, he muttered, as he saw the form curled up beside the stone. As they approach, the disheveled cat shifts at the sound of John's voice. Hello? He tentatively calls out. The cat slowly turns around. <gasps> Hello, it lets out, as if each breath is a struggle. As the cat takes a step forward, they take a step back. John flinched slightly, seeing that the cat was partially covered in the black stuff, which seemed to writhe similarly. Who are you? The wheezing cat waited a few moments, thinking about what to say before stretching. It is strange and wonderful to see other beings in this land. That is no matter though, he gasped. But I'm glad you're here. Angel at this point was completely terrified. John, on the other hand, just huffed and begrudgingly sat down. Tell us what's going on. We don't have time for 
pleasantries, he hissed. Angel dropped into a defensive crouch, just in case. But the new cat didn't seem to mind, simply spoke again. Oh, you two look like you have plenty of time. There is no speck of darkness on you that I can see, he mumbled. I bet you're here for a reason, in fact. John looked over the creature before speaking. Yeah, but it's only going to be that way for so long, so get talking. What's happening here, and how do we stop it? Long ago, hundreds of cats roamed this area. We all prospered, aside from a strange sickness that came about every few generations. It's what I'm unfortunately suffering from now, in fact. John listened impatiently, tapping a paw against the stone as if to hurry the cat along. Angel couldn't help but gently put a paw on his just to tell him that she was there for him and that it would be okay. However, her eyes never left the strange cat that continued to try to catch its breath to continue its story. Our pelts would grow all dark and dull and darkness crept upon us, but for centuries we fought it off somehow. <laughs> I never learned much about the strange rituals we'd use, but the <gasps> ghost seers, they knew the way. <laughs> Last time, we were not so lucky. I watched everyone I love succumb to this darkness. I'm the only one I know to be left. It takes over, and they shatter. John simply continued to nod, suspecting that most of the tale was nonsense, but listening regardless. How do we stop it? He yowled. Angel flinched a little at John's harsh tone. She didn't expect him to be so aggressive as the feeble cat responded. If I knew you wouldn't be here, the cat retorted calmly. There was legends of a cure, however, but I'm not even sure if they exist. The cat was now slightly trembling as they spoke next. Branches in the shape of antlers. They paused with one final shudder, falling to their side. It was then after their eyes closed that the slime around them began to multiply, covering more and more of their body. <laughs> Angel let out a fearful gasp, but too scared to even take a step closer. John instinctively took a step in front of Angel as the creature attempted to move only to be held down by the weight of the ooze. We're running out of time. John watched as the cat attempted to get up but stumble. He flinched as the dark substance suddenly surged again, covering more of their form. He quickly looked back at Angel as if to say, get ready to run. The next sound that echoed throughout the cave was the cat trying desperately to breathe. Help me. The, the black goo, it's, it's taking over. John was solely focused on the answer to solve all of this, turning towards the cat. Where do we find the cure? He questioned, his tone frantic. The cat writhed in discomfort 
as their breathing was labored, they seemed to be trying to respond, but unable to. After a few moments, Angel tapped on John. The antlers? Please, John, we have to try, she begged, taking a few steps closer to the cat. She didn't want them to die if they could save him. An old place. <sighs> the cat tried to say more, but coughs began to take over as the goop pulsed and grew around them. John immediately backed away as the coughing started and began to flinch as it only grew louder and echoed off the walls. Angel, let's go now. Angel hesitated for a moment before turning to follow John as they both ran out of the tunnel. You see that Angel and John have safely made it out of the cave. Angel wanted to take a moment to breathe, but John continued. He seemed extremely worried, only slowing down for a moment to look both ways before running across the road. An old place, he muttered. That could be anywhere. The two of them continued to run for what seemed like forever, hoping that maybe if they kept running they could let go back in time. But eventually, John found a cliff. Angel trying to stop him. Careful. It was extremely steep and there was running water at the bottom. John was breathing hard as he looked over the edge of the gorge. You saw what was happening, right? That stuff was turning the cat into that thing we saw earlier. That has to be what happened here. Angel also took the chance to catch her breath. Yes, it's taking them over. Corrupting them? She questioned looking over at John for some sort of confirmation. That's why we're here to stop it. And I have a feeling that that cat's the last thing left. Angel was satisfied with that answer and nodded as they both continued to climb the steep cliff, the stars seemingly shining brighter than they ever have. Once they had gotten far enough to where they couldn't smell that sour scent anymore, Angel stopped and looked around. This place seems old. John nodded. Old enough. And there's not any sign of the black stuff around. Now, we just have to find an antler-shaped branch. Seems easy enough, he said looking back at Angel who began to gently pick up flowers and look under things to find a branch. J John, she whispered, looking around as he caught her eyes and walked over. Do you see them? A large grin begins to grow on his face. I sure do. Let's get one back to that cat. John carefully leans down and picks up the branch before turning tail and running. Angel quickly catches up and they both go back in the direction they believe they came in. Thankfully, John had a very good sense of direction, so Angel trusted him. And before long, they made it back to the cave opening. Angel hesitated for only a second before John quickly entered. However, what the two were greeted by was not the sickly old cat on the floor, but a new creature. John nearly dropped the branch as he reached the mouth of the cave and saw the thing. John, it's huge now. It's so much bigger than when it was a kid. And where, where is that cat? John looked up at the creature. We got what you wanted, but his voice trailed off. 
deciding that it was likely a lost cause before looking over at Angel. I think we're looking at it. The two talked, whispered back and forth, debating whether or not they should continue and try to approach the creature or just turn back now, but they decided to continue, dropping to the ground in a crouch before slowly crawling closer. The light radiating off the crystal made it almost impossible to get a good look, but it seemed as if this creature had multiple eyes. As the two watched, she felt John's tail gently wrap around hers, but quickly moved hers away in embarrassment. The cat didn't say what we're supposed to do with the stick, he muttered. Letting out a small sigh, he decides to continue. Angel follows him until he motions for her to stop, but he himself continues to climb closer to the creature. He carefully crept up the cave walls closer to the thing, clutching the branch tightly in between his jaws. Just gotta get up to it, probably. Like a vampire, right through the heart. He got as close as he was willing to before leaping at the thing, intending to ram the branch through its slimy form, only to hear the horrifying sound of the twig branch snapping against it. Immediately the creature splits in two, the larger one letting out a horrible screech as the smaller one shoots directly for Angel, who was waiting below. The small, slimy creature immediately started to attack her face. She kept her mouth closed as it seemingly tried to get in. The creature now completely covered her face and she couldn't see a thing. Leaping to her paws, she runs and slams into the moonstone, it knocking her unconscious. At the same time, John slipped losing his footing as he was startled by the sudden dislodging of the second creature. The broken pieces of the pointless branch tumbled down alongside him as his body went limp for a few moments on the ground, very close to Angel's. John stood up almost immediately as he hit the ground, wincing and shaking the pain off as he hurried to Angel's side his worried eyes flicking back to the creature every few moments. Angel, please, wake up. We have to go. Right now. Angel tried to get up, but it was difficult. John instinctively reached down and helped pick her up. The two of them began running as best as they could out of the cave when they suddenly realized that they were being followed. Thankfully, there was a light at the end of the tunnel, and that helped the two make it out. Turning back, they realized that the creature had stopped. John was the first to speak after he finally caught his breath. It... it stopped. Angel scowled as she locked eyes with the creature. Why? It had no problem attacking me. The branch didn't work, but maybe it's something about the cave? He cut himself off as soon as he came to the sudden realization. Or the darkness. It isn't entering the light, and the cat called it dark. Angel finally broke eye contact with the creature and looked over at John. Huh? She whispered looking still puzzled as ever. She returned her gaze back towards the creature, taking a few steps closer to sort of hide behind a tree. Maybe we need to bring them out here. You know, that could work. Actually, yeah, that could work. Since all the black slime was always liquid, Maybe the light makes it unstable, 
melts it or something. Angel nodded hesitantly. Yes, but grabbing them will be the tricky part. Don't worry. You grab the bottom one, and I'll grab the top one. Okay? Alright, let's do it, she said. John led the way, but Angel made sure to stay close behind as the two crept closer and closer to the mouth of the cave. It was strange. The creature, the large one, didn't want to move, but the smaller one seemed to pull back into the darkness. With a single nod, they both leaped at the same time, grabbing their intended creature and dragging them into the light. As soon as the small creature hit the sunlight, it began to sputter and spat, oil and goo flying everywhere, but it was hot and burning. Angel gasped as one hit her. It's working! And gross! John, however, stayed silent as he pressed down on the smaller creature, making sure it couldn't get away as it slowly began to turn into mush. The small creature eventually evaporated, giving off a horrible stench. John stumbled away, watching as it became less of a cat and more of a pool, leaving only the slime-covered remains of the same cat that they had seen before, drained and mostly lifeless, but breathing. When suddenly, a familiar, disheveled voice across from the dark liquid mess arose, just barely audible. Angel leaned down to hear better. Thank you, the cat managed to speak. Angel was overcome with emotions, and she quickly picks up a leaf, trying to help clean the slime off of this poor cat's face. John stared down at it as the final, writhing, bubbling motion faded just in time for the last rays of the day to fade and the darkness to dissipate. Angel looks up at John and gives him a small smile before frowning again. Well, what now, John? I think that it's over. I think he repeats, almost mumbling to himself, before turning away and looking off into the distance. Oh, okay. Well, I'm just happy that we're still together, she says, looking at him. He nods. Me too, Angel. Me too. It was then that the third mysterious cat finally is able to breathe better and speak. The three of them talk, and he explains that he needs time to recover and get all of this goop off of him, but soon, if they return, he might be able to give them more information. The two of them nod and slowly turn to leave as the scene fades. To black. You've done it. Against all odds, you both have driven back the corruption in this realm. However, this is not the end of the corruption, for darkness still seeps through the cracks in your home. As promised, I will send you back, but in exchange for a return to what you know, I must now revoke your memory of this encounter. Few creatures can truly grasp the role that I play in these worlds. Perhaps in time you will grow strong enough to earn these memories back, but until that point, they will be mine to keep. Good luck, Angel and John. The road ahead is a dark one.